Hi everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue. Well, we've talked in the past about things you can be doing to stock up or that you need to be aware of due to supply chain issues and how to deal with those. But today I want to talk to you about three things you can be doing right now to take care of some things, to get ahead of the game a little bit. And um, these ideas came to me, uh, well, a couple of them I encountered this week, so that's where they came from and I'll tell you those stories. But I think within the last few years, uh, a lot of us have put off certain things or uh, delayed certain things because number one, there were supply chain issues. Even if you wanted to get some things, they weren't available. And uh, number two, we wanted to see how, okay, inflation was going to go. Well, it turns out it's bad. It is not going to get cheaper to do some of these things. So now is the time to do them. And one of the first ones I want to talk about is car maintenance. And I will tell you what happened this week. Um, I got into my uh, trusty truck, my 07 Tundra, and I go to turn it on. It turns over just like normal, but it won't click into idle. It just completely shuts down. Lights come on, check engine light. Oh my God, scared me to death. <laughs> you know, because it's like, okay, I live out in the middle of nowhere. I don't want my truck to leave me stranded, ever. And so, uh, it's been a while since I took it in for maintenance because, you know, it just didn't seem appropriate. I wasn't traveling that much. But here lately, I have started traveling again. So, um, I took it in to my mechanic and it turns out uh, my key fob um, battery was low and apparently that will make the truck go berserk. And um, so, he fixed that, but I also made an appointment for Friday to bring it in and give it the once over. It needs the oil changed. It needs... Uh, I want them to check the hoses, you know, all the regular stuff, because again, that's not getting cheaper. So I want them to go ahead and check it over. But um, one of the things that I was talking to him about is how easy it is to get your car repaired now, because at one time they couldn't get parts. He said that that has eased up quite a bit. It's still not perfect, but if you're going to need maintenance, now's a good time to do it. Once everybody starts traveling again over the summer, uh, I'm recording this in May, by the way. There will be a lot more demand to get vehicles fixed, to get vehicles revamped, all that stuff. And so now's a good time uh, before that summer season. And as we were standing there talking, he's like, when's the last time you looked at your tires? Do I ever look at my tires? No, they're, they're round, they're black, they roll. I don't look at them. Anyway, there's a big crack between the treads of my tires on one of my front tires. And I have driven more than a thousand miles in the last few weeks on those tires. It just freaks me out. Uh, the idea that I, that's something I just put off, I didn't really think about. But now is a good time to have your vehicle checked over. So don't wait. You don't want it to cost you a lot, definitely in the form of an accident, <laughs> just because you delayed that. And those things aren't getting cheaper. So while you can get them done, take your vehicles in, have them checked over, go ahead and pay for that maintenance because again, it won't be cheaper six months from now. So do that first. Now the second thing I want to talk about today is over-the-counter medications. I was going through, uh, actually I was putting all of the, the medications that I have over, over the counter out of drawers onto a shelf that I had just gotten from my bathroom and realized a lot of them are beyond the expiration date and I'm talking about things like cough syrup and uh, Imodium and Pepto and you know those things you keep on the shelf for various illnesses but you don't necessarily use that often. Well those have also been in very short supply. I have been hunting for a particular kind of Rolaids that I really like and haven't been able to find them for months and they just now are getting them back into stock but it's still very limited. I also use uh, arthritis strength Tylenol. That has also been in very limited supply. Uh, here again, I live rurally, uh, as a lot of people do, <laughs> but even in the cities, even in places like Amarillo or Albuquerque or Denver, these things can be in very short supply. They're only getting a limited stock in. So look at your expiration dates on your over-the-counter medications. Be sure you have new ones. Be sure if there's something specific that you really need to take, like my arthritis strength Tylenol. Um, <clears throat> because if I don't take it, my hands look like claws. So <laughs> I really do take that quite a bit. And so, but if there's something specific like that, that you really need some allergy medication, uh, maybe visine, a particular kind of visine drops for your eyes, 
be sure you get enough to last a little while because they're having issues with those. I've talked to numerous nurses and they also say that prescription medications, they are having trouble getting some of them. In fact, there are some surgeries they don't schedule until they can verify the medications they need are going to be there. How ridiculous is that? So if you have medications that you use and need, be sure you order them in plenty of time in case there's a delay. Be sure you talk to your pharmacy about anything that's in short supply, uh, what you're going to do if you can't get it, those sorts of things. Those are good conversations to have because medications are one of those things that a lot of them are not made in the United States. So realize they are also very subject to supply chain issues. And this includes medications for your pets. A lot of veterinarians have not been able to get medications either. Again, the same reason. They're in short supply. They're made elsewhere. They're having shipping issues. So understand you could run into that with your pets. Now, as we're talking about pets, uh, one of the supply chain issues with pets was pet food. Uh, there was a lot of pet food you could not get, certain types you could not get. I have a senior kitty, so I was needing senior kitty hairball formula, a particular type of food. I could not get it for months, so I had to change their food. And that's stressful for all pets. So now that those are easing up, when you find it, be sure you get it. I know in the past we talked about getting things on sale and how you could wait for the sale and, and stock up. You can't really do that anymore. Number one, they're not running as many sales because they don't need to. They don't even have the supply. And number two, when they do run a sale, they are severely limiting how many you can buy. So it doesn't necessarily benefit you that much on certain items. And pet food is one of those. So if you see it and can find it, go ahead and stock up on it. It's not going to get cheaper. And while we're talking about pets, I know a lot of people have had the experience of taking their animals to the vet. And oh my goodness, the cost is skyrocketing. It almost costs more than it does to take yourself to the doctor. <laughs> so there are going to be ways and things you need to think about uh, in order to save money but still get things done. A big one is vaccinations. If you're used to taking your uh, pet to the vet for a vaccination, start looking for low-cost clinics. It's the same stuff. It's the same vaccines. You just don't have to pay all the fees. That may be an option for you. Um, the vaccinations, like for my pupper, I get it tractor supply, with the exceptions of things like rabies and bordetello. Tractor supply has the, the basic puppy vaccinations, and I can do them myself. Some people can't do that or don't want to, but low-cost vaccination clinics are a great option. And if you've never done that, check around, talk to your county or your city, uh, talk to your vet, see when there's going to be one, and be sure you catch those to save yourself quite a bit of money but still keep your pets protected uh, in a way that you choose for them to be protected. And now let's talk about uh, treating pets that have issues. And this happened to me in December with Evan. Um, Evan is my senior kitty. And in December, he got very, very sick. He would not eat. Uh, this went on for three or four days. I tried to get him into the vet. They had no openings, none. It was right before Christmas. Part of their staff was out sick. We have two vets here in town, both of them, same situation. No one had any openings. And at that point, it wasn't an emergency. He just wasn't feeling right, and so fine. I couldn't get him in. But the recommendation I got was to get a jug of children's Pedialyte, the unflavored kind, just the clear kind, Pedialyte, and give that to him in a syringe, uh, the body part of a syringe, and I did that a couple of times a day to get his gut moving, to be sure he stayed hydrated, uh, just like you would anyone who's sick. Supportive care is great, and you don't need a vet for that necessarily, uh, but if you can't get him in, you can't get him in, and that was my issue. Well, shortly thereafter, uh, he his gut completely shut down and nothing was moving, so I got a small children's uh, enema, uh, again, uh, their recommendation, and if you've never given a cat an enema, y'all, that's an experience that you really want to miss. <laughs> but anyway, I did it. Uh, it takes very, very little. And it got things moving. And because he was starting to be hydrated with those electrolytes, 
he finally started eating and drinking again. I made him a little broth out of his kitty food, and he finally got past that. But now I always keep a bottle of Pedialyte on hand specifically for my pets should something happen and they need supportive care. I always keep a little bottle of children's enema on hand should something like that happen again. Because here again, when your pet needs that care and you don't have an option to take them to a vet, you're stuck. You've got to do something for them or they just get worse to where it gets to be an emergency. So there are certain things I keep for my pets. And this includes, I keep Imodium for my pets. I keep Pepto for my pets. My dog, especially when she gets into the cat food, she'll have a bout or two of diarrhea. <laughs> and those things are really helpful. Always check with your vet to be sure what you can and cannot give them. But if you're not running to the vet constantly, your pets will be good, you will be good, and your bank account will thank you. But there are many things you can do for your pets that you can keep on hand that will help solve these issues just in case you run into a scenario like I did where you absolutely don't have an option to take them to a vet. That is very, very scary. So those, those are three things you can be doing right now. Be sure your car is well maintained and everything's taken care of, tires, all that stuff all taken care of. Be sure your over-the-counter medications are in date. They're not out of date. And you have what you might need on hand. And be sure anything that you need for your pets is on hand and you have plenty of it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe. And I'll see you next time.